During the lockdown, a friend of mine woke up in the middle of the night. He had some uneasy feeling in his throat. He got up, tried to drink some hot water, but the pain persisted. He checked with the back of his palm and he realized he was with high temperature. The thought occurred to him, maybe I have got corona. He tried to sleep, but as you can imagine, he couldn't sleep. He was imagining all the possibilities of getting sick, being taken to hospital and put in the ICU unit and he even imagined the unimaginable and what would happen to his life, his family and all that. So this is natural. Whenever we hear something dreadful, something uncertain, something dangerous, the, our mind is capable of creating so many horror stories. They become so real and we forget we are the directors. We sit in the audience and we begin to cry. It is the same ability of our mind that we use to create beautiful pictures, beautiful stories about a desirable future. So today we are, we are trying to figure out how can we use the same ability not to hurt us but to go beyond that. Actually, a lot of scientists think that this is an ability we have acquired along the way in our evolution to connect the past to the present and project it into the future. Now all these things happen from thoughts. Now perhaps one day, if you remember that you were chased by a dog, you got scared, not necessarily to the dog if you really think of it, to the thought that the dog might bite you and it might hurt you. So it is that thought that creates that fear. Now look at how animals behave. You have seen on Discovery Channel and all these things how tigers chase deer. And if the tiger let it go, you know, it doesn't follow all the way. And the deer looks around, tiger is no more, it gets back to eating. We can't do that. What will we do? We will keep thinking about it. Will this tiger come again? Can I put a fence? Can I put a CCT camera? You know, all these things will come to our mind. That's our ability. Now, this ability is useful, but it has its negative side effects. Now, this ability to keep thinking over and over again, what we call rumination, is the main cause to create stress. Now, when we are confronted with a situation, which is a challenge, challenge is a situation where the resources you have, whether it is money, time, capabilities, people, is not sufficient to meet the requirement, then you feel it's a challenge. When you are challenged, that circumstance overwhelms you. And then you cannot get out of all these negative horror movies. You keep repeating them so much, then you think it's so real. So if you can break this cycle of keep repeating the same thought, probably we can get out of it. Actually, that is the way. Now, if you are carrying something heavy, what would you do? When it is too heavy, when you feel it is too heavy, you will uh, drop it for a while, right? Take anything very light. It can be even a pin. This little flicker, if I keep holding, if I keep holding it for a few minutes, it's okay. But 10 minutes, my arm will hurt. What should I do? I just drop it down. So can we learn how to drop some of these painful things for a while and gather momentum, gather energy, have some clarity and move forward? This is like safety valves, if you can do that, if you can become aware. 
So very simple. If you can become aware that you are in this continuous thought process. About 20, 30 years ago, it was very common in factories with very fast moving wheels and things like that. Workers get caught to these uh, machines and their hands get chopped away and all that. But now there are very sensitive, protective, uh, sensitive uh, stoppers. So if you have something like that, it will stop. So if you can become aware that you are caught in this chain of thoughts, probably you can stop that and say, mm -hmm, I'm getting caught to my own movie. I'm the director. So that you can change the role and redirect the movie. So we are discovering today the simple process of mindfulness that you have been hearing all the time is the way out of this. You remember when these boys got trapped in that underground cave in Thailand, when people went to save them, they were not depressed, they were not stressed. Why? Fortunately for these children, their teacher knew how to practice mindfulness. So that is what we are going to learn today. Now this works on a very simple principle. Thoughts always come one after the other. How much you say at any given moment, moment is so fast, there's only one thought. So when you hear something, you build a negative uh, horror story and you keep repeating that and the moment you become aware, ah, I'm watching my own horror movie, if you can do that, then you are different to the person who is being driven by the thought. So then you are a person who is aware. It's like anger. When you are driven by the emotion of anger, you don't know what you are doing. But you have come across situations where people say, I'm angry. I know what to do. This is not the place. You see, he's a better person because he knows he's angry, but he knows this is not the place to react. So the moment you become aware, you are the person who is aware, not the person who is driven by the emotion because it's a new thought. So we will learn how to use this simple ability to become aware for you to move and become free. So very simple. We learn to bring our attention to this moment. I am here right now. And then observe what happens without getting involved. Because the moment you get involved, you lose perspective. Right? For example, if I keep my hand like this, I cannot see anything. Even the hand I cannot see. But if I can stretch it, then I can see the hand and I can see everything. It's like that. So if you can create that little space, then you can have a better view. So how do you do that? This is through a process of learning how to do this. It's like a skill. Skill is a simple ability that can be improved by constant practice. So we will learn the simple practice of bringing the mind to the present moment and observe what happens through a simple exercise. So you know the skill, this is coming from mindfulness is related to Buddhism, but there's a lot of scientific research that goes on to say how this benefit. So you, it is in a way secular from the benefit point of view. So anybody can practice it. So this is a skill I said. Skills cannot be learned by listening. Skills have to be tried. So shall we try for a few minutes how to practice mindfulness? Wherever you are, bring yourself to where you, where you are. If you are standing, leaning onto something, if you are listening this on the tube, lean onto a pole, if you are sitting, wherever you are, sit comfortably and listen to these few guide words that I give you. Gently close your eyes, bring your attention inwards, Try to feel all the sensations of your body. From the bottom of your feet, 
the ankles, the knee. Just see what are the sensations you can feel. If you are sitting, how do you feel the bo weight of your body? The trunk, the shoulders, hands, arms, all the way up to the top of your head. Just try to scan your body and feel whatever the sensations that you can notice. You will notice that some places have tensions, some places have pains. Gently ask that place to relax. And now listen to the sounds that you can hear in the environment. Don't try to identify them, but just notice the sounds come and go. Keep watching the sounds. Listen to them. As you do this, you will find a silence in between sounds. And now, pay close attention to your mind and see whether you can notice any thoughts that come to your mind. They will pop up. And if it is nothing to got to do with this moment, just let it be and say, not now. See how silent you become. And you might notice that you are breathing. See whether you can follow the breath without interfering. No control, nothing, just watching how the breath comes in and goes out. You are just a bystander, watching the breath coming in and going out. Sometimes you might wander on something else, become aware of that and bring the thoughts back to the breath. Let's keep doing this for a few seconds more. Okay, now take a deep breath while exhaling, open your eyes. So what we did was, we learned how to bring the mind back to the present moment, what you're doing. So this you can keep practicing with your day-to-day -day things. Maybe when you are eating, see whether you can only be with eating. Interesting one is brushing your teeth. See whether you can brush your teeth and do only that. Or when you are driving, see whether you can be only with driving. Or when you are waiting for the lift. Right? Maybe it's a good time to check whether you are breathing. How is your breath? Washing dishes. Anything that you do, you can learn to bring your mind to what you are doing. So once you keep doing that, then you will learn very quickly to notice what's going on. So once you master that, whenever you are worrying, you can start labeling, saying worrying, worrying, worrying. Or when you are thinking, 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 thinking. So then you can stop the whole process of worrying and come back to the moment and probably watch your breath. It's a very simple technique and if you keep practicing over a period of time, like any other skill, you can find far finer things discovering yourself. I call it a new mind operating system. You become aware of what's going on. You will notice your intentions and you will learn to let go so that you become free from these worrying thoughts. And these things will give you greater insights about you. You know, we try to learn so much about others, we try to learn so much about the world, 
But the most important person to learn is yourself. So start this process today. And there are books to read on this. There are uh, talks on this. But the most important book to read is yourself. The most important talk that you must listen is your inner chatter. Do that and get on for being instead of doing. We are, after all, human beings, not human doings. Enjoy the moment.